as you're arriving, it's a nice opportunity to take time to settle into your body to ensure that you're in a comfortable enough posture and that the needs that you can meet are being met. Of course, there's lots of things we might prefer to be other than they are, but there's some things we have some agency around so, so we can take care of them. One of the things I continue to find really interesting in practice is that often, sometimes, it isn't until we actually stop that we realize that there's anything we might need to change. Like it might be niggling at us that whole time, but we don't really have an awareness of it because we're so busy in our lives and our modern lives. And I watched watch Ron take this huge wad of keys out of his pocket. It's like, that could have been like digging into his thigh for hours. And then it's like, oh, check in. All right. Right. You could actually do something about it. I have a student who has shared with me before that sometimes if she gets a, a grain of sand or a pebble or something in her shoe, she leaves it there for a while. Like as a practice, can I be with this uncomfortable thing? That is not how I roll. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, if I'm sitting in practice, I don't track the itch. Like I, I tend to it and I allow it and I perceive it and I recognize it arising and passing. But if in my lived experience in my daily life, I notice there's something that I would prefer to be other than it is and I can do something about <laughs> it. I do it. I take care of myself. I come from an environment where there was a lot of neglect. I don't need to continue that neglect. Like I'm already conditioned to continue the neglect and the self-neglect. And so the practice of recognizing, oh, I have a need. Thirsty? I'm hungry? I'm tired? I need to pee? You know, like some things that for some people are like super simple. It's like, oh, if I notice that, to really act on it and care for that. And sometimes that's like straightening my sock, you know, like the tiniest thing. And it makes a difference. And my husband, my partner is like completely different. He come from such a stable background. He can roll with it. So like, yeah, whatever. I am eating five days out there. It's all good. Like <laughs> completely different. So this practice of stopping and settling and noticing, oh, I have a need. Can I meet it? You can I just take that wad of keys out of my pocket or grab a blanket or maybe there's a little stretch that feels good. Or maybe I have too much layers on, too many layers on. I need to take off my sweater. Like, listening in. One of my favorite refrains of ask listen and act right can we actually ask ourselves hey how you doing what do you mean like letting ourselves know i'm here for you and then listen to the response and act from that place of wisdom right not the frantic frenetic trying to fix everything because of course that's not possible but to act from that wisdom that emerges oh have a need In a 12-step program that I'm a part of, I don't know if it shows up in other rooms, there's an acronym of HALT that we use. Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Like, don't get two is what some people say. I'm like, yeah, notice if you are, is how I hold it. Like, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. And then tend to it. Tend to it. Mm. Yeah, and so maybe you've arrived at a comfortable posture. Great, resting into that. Maybe you want to make some adjustments. We'll settle in for a period of practice. I don't know, 30, 40 minutes. Sitting, standing, lying down. Whatever supports you right here, right now. Again, taking the time to ask and then listen to the response to discern what's most supportive for your heart mind. Right now, not yesterday or tomorrow. 
not the ozu I always do, but like, oh, right now, I want to feel supportive. Sometimes it's hard to do that. It's hard to do the new unfamiliar thing. There's some story in our mind about how it should be or how it was, how it's supposed to be. Those are not useful. Right here, right now. As much as we can understand in the moment. What posture is supportive for this heart, mind, and body? And then making a choice and settling in there. It's not going to be perfect. That's not the goal. And allowing these three sounds of the bell to, to support this coming home to ourselves as we are. Each of us, this. process, this unfolding of experience, arising, passing moment by moment. Settling in, opening up to our present moment, arising and passing experience. The hearing of the sound of my voice arising and passing. The hearing of the sounds arising and passing around you. The person next to you breathing or people walking by outside or moving around wherever you might be. The sounds arise and pass. Arise and pass. Arise and pass. That's all phenomena does. As all conditioned experience does, it's all impermanent. You, me, this moment. It's born and it dies. Arising and passes away. As does each sensation of the body, each thought of the mind, each emotion of the heart. And each breath. Inviting attention to rest in the way that's most supportive for you right now. Perhaps that's any of the things I just mentioned. Thoughts, emotions, sounds, breath. Bodily sensations. We choose an area to focus attention or rest into a broad awareness. Of arising, passing, noticing what you're aware of, 
Noticing the heart's response to that. Or maybe if you like for today, bringing particular attention to the cessation, the fading away of the breath, the sound. Conditioned experience. Rest. Explore. Play with it. This is your practice. And may these three sounds of the bell support you in settling in. A little wake up sound to let you and the bell know it's going to be invited to sound. And then three full invitations of the bell. Can you hear? Can you bear witness to the fullness of the sound, and particularly the cessation of the resonance of the bell? All conditioned experience rising and passing. Like waves on the ocean.
Noticing the impermanence of all the things, the sounds, thoughts, the emotions, each breath, all the bodily sensations, taste and smells, all conditioned. It all arises and passes away. Noticing it's becoming aware of it. Not an idea or a notion or a teaching. But exploring it in your own experience. Observing. Perhaps supporting that observation by resting down, moving down through the tailbone, through the knees, through the feet, the back. Letting go, surrendering to gravity. Lifting up out of the crown of the head and balance to that surrender, supporting wakefulness and alertness, receptivity and openness, broadening out to the shoulders. They cultivate relaxed alertness. Easeful attention and receptivity. Soft and open. And of course, thoughts will arise about the past and the future. This is not a problem. Through our practice, we might become aware of them, aware of their impermanent nature. Maybe aware of where they came from. Maybe. Resting and opening. Moment by moment, receiving, receiving the moment.
when we recognize you know, we're not attending to the present moment. That's a moment of mindfulness. That recognition is mindfulness itself, and it is happening in the present. And then that too fades away and attention is elsewhere, no problem. It's all in Mindfulness, absence of mindfulness. It all can be held in the field of awareness. Each experience coming and going all in the Bible.
Noticing where attention is drawn. And observing the impermanent nature of that experience. The impermanent nature of your heart's reaction, your mind's reaction, your body's reaction to that condition and experience. Oh, all arising and passing. We are learning to bear witness to life.
Resting in yourself. Finicking on the present moment.
receiving, the arising and passing of the conditioned experience of each one. The opening to the truth of impermanence, all conditioned experience arising and passing away, this period of stillness arising and passing away, each breath, 
sound of my voice, my gentle movements. And you begin to invite your body to move. Can you be present? So the arising and passing their impermanence and their conditioned nature to gradually expand the field of awareness to include movement and sights, as much sight as you might have. Holding it all in the field of awareness. And as we come out of our stillness practice, I just want to collectively offer up some love to Tom. Tom has probably been here to greet all of you at one point in time as you came in the door. And he is navigating COVID. And so I want to offer up the merit of this collective practice we've just engaged in for his health and recovery for as much ease as might be available to navigating this novel coronavirus. So welcome everyone to the San Francisco Dharma Collective and specifically to spiritual friends Sangha's Mindful Mondays. Glad to be here with you. As some of you will recall, the very first talk I gave here just a few months ago now was on Dukkha. included in that conversation, the fact that it's the first noble truth, it's the foundation. And also that it's part of these three characteristics or three marks of existence of dukkha, anicca, and anatta. And anatta is the truth that there's no inherent fixed self here. It's a process, it's a flow, it's an unfolding. And anicca is impermanence. All conditioned experience is impermanent including this human form and all the sounds and the breath and the thoughts and the heart and all of it. It's all permanent. And you know, once you've been on the planet for a while, you've had the experience of impermanence in many forms, not least of which is the, the cessation of life. Right? It's what happens. It's unavoidable. And yet it's really painful when it happens. There's, there's loss and grief and wanting things to be other than they are often. And that just creates more suffering. I was talking to my aunt today and she's feeling very sad. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's appropriate to be sad. It's appropriate to be sad. Your sister has just died. Sad. Sad. And, you know, I don't know that how much she's available to hear me. So I don't like push. So I didn't go on to say, like, it's inevitable. And perhaps you're making it worse for yourself by, like, whatever things, different stories that we create in our minds. I didn't say anything about it to her because I don't think that's helpful. But I can bring it here to you, that reminder of how we add in the extra stuff, you know? We make it worse. 
because it's not what we want. It's like, yeah, of course it's not what we want. Who wants COVID? You know, like there's so much that's not, as we always talked about it a lot in this, in this sangha. So there's so much. And death is on my mind today because my aunt died. And some years ago now, when my godmother died, I was asked to hold space at the ceremony honoring her life. And I read from this chanting book from Bhavana Society. I'm gonna read it tonight, as well as I think of my aunt Pat, who died on Saturday in Philadelphia. It was in her late 70s, mid, mid to late 70s. And she had had a full life. She had three children and three grandchildren. Lots of nieces and nephews and siblings and cousins. Her mom, my grandma, lived to be 101. She just died a couple of years ago. So she got to be with her mom for a really long time. And her mom was a beautiful thing. So it's not all bad. You know, life has to come to an end. We can't avoid it. And this, this sutta, Marana Sati, I think conveys that in a really beautiful and powerful way. So I hope that it supports you. I'll probably say a little bit more when I'm finished reading and then we'll get to talk together about how it landed or didn't land or way that it was hard, you know, take care of yourself. Marana Sati. Mindfulness of death. Like a flame blown out by the wind, this life continuum goes to destruction. Recognizing one's similarities to others, one should develop mindfulness of death. Just as people who have achieved great success in the world have died, so too. I must certainly die. Death is harassing. Death always comes along together with birth, searching for an opportunity like a murderer out to kill. You know, allowing yourself to be with your body to be with your heart, to be with the arising and passing. Perhaps some of these words will be hard to hear. That's not a problem, right? It's uncomfortable, it's unpleasant. Can we meet that? Can we breathe that? Can we be with ourselves, to be with our heart, to be with the conditioned arising and passing of experience? And notice if sometimes there's like a, a bracing or a pushing away or trying to run away from it. You know, kind of pushing it down. And can we greet that? Can we greet that resistance with tenderness, with love, with care, as much as is possible? As much as is possible. And if it's not possible in that moment, then we might practice, as we've done many times now, practice placing our attention somewhere that is nourishing or neutral or soothing. Perhaps the experience of the body resting or the sensation of breath. Or even a hand on the face or neck or giving ourselves a hug in some way. You know, I really like skin on skin for that kind of personal act of metta, of loving kindness, for loving kindness. Showing ourselves, showing our heart, mind, and body that we're here with ourselves, we're here for ourselves. And as we're ready, when we're ready, turning toward this truth, this reality, turning to these words in a way that works for you, right? Titrating, you let a little bit in, care for yourself. 
allow your belly to soften. Embrace your reality. And in that reality, your embracing can simply be your response to this moment. You don't have to embrace what I'm saying. It's not feeling good. Like, that's not what I'm asking. I'm going to read that last line again and then continue. Death always comes along together with birth, searching for an opportunity like a murderer out to kill. Not the least bit stoppable. Always going forward. Life rushes toward its end, like the rising sun to its setting. How's it feeling there? How's your heart? How are you doing? Caring for yourself through this, through this life, through this truth. Like lightning, a bubble, dewdrops or a line drawn in the water. Life cannot last. Death is like a murderer after its foe, completely unrestrained. You know, for me, as I read this, I can feel a fire in my heart. I can feel burning. What's happening for you? Noticing, cultivating awareness. Death slays those great in glory, in strength, merit, powers, and wisdom. And even the two kinds of conquerors. No need to speak about one like me. Due to a lack of the necessities of life, to some inner or outer misfortune, I, I who am dying moment after moment, can die in the blink of an eye. The life of mortals is signless. Its length cannot be known in advance. It is difficult and limited and tied up with suffering. There is no possibility that mortals shall not die. Having reached old age, they die. Such is the nature of living being. As fruit when ripe has to fall, so all beings live constantly in the fear that they will die. as a potter's earthen jars eventually must all break up, so too does the life of mortals eventually come to an end. The young and the old, the foolish and the wise, all move in the grip of death, all finally end in death. Impermanence are all conditioned things. 
affected by rising and falling away. Having arisen, they then must cease. Blissful is it when they subside. Before long, this body will lie cast away upon the ground, bereft of all consciousness, like a useless block of wood. Uninviting, she came here. Without leave, she departed. She went just as she came. So why lament? Noticing how it lands in you. Noticing the arising and passing of experience inside of you, in your heart, in your gut, body. And settling and contracting and flowing and receiving and pushing away and embracing. Can you be with it? And be with yourselves as you are. With this flow of impermanent arising and passing experience. We'll be read one piece and then we'll open it up for conversation. Impermanent are all conditioned things, affected by rising and falling away. Having arisen, they then must cease. Blissful is it when they subside. Thank you for your kind attention. Hmm. Maybe parts of that were easy to receive or hard to receive. I think my first question is how much were you able to track in your body what was there as I offered those words? How many people felt like they were kind of able to be with their bodies? Yeah, nice, really great. Yeah, yeah, right. That's what you're practicing to be with your body. It's all kinds of things that rise in passing all the time. Mostly we miss it. Mostly we're not we're not tuned in. We're in a kind of a reactive place. But through practice, we can be with it to be with the arising and passing because that's just how it is. It's unavoidable. You're going to go out there and try to stop those sounds on 24th Street? Like, not a chance, right? And try to stop yourself from feeling your feelings. I'm sure you've tried that. It doesn't work so well. Yeah. 